Welcome back to another True Crime Wednesday. Sorry, I'm a little bit late, about 20 minutes late. Do apologize for that. But tonight is going to be a little bit of a blast from the past. So from those that do remember me on Twitch, this is a case that we actually did cover. We did go over this information, so I want to make sure this is on YouTube. And that way it's getting spread around. So there's a lot about this case concerning the Zodiac Killer. It's a little peculiar. I'll explain as we get closer to it, but essentially this is a guy that he had several victims throughout California um, that he had taken, uh, well, he had, he had killed um, over just a short period of time and then was sending very, very cryptic messages and ciphers to the police and to um, the newspapers taunting them. But were they really taunts, or were they more... Yeah, good luck, you're not catching me. Or were they ways of also just saying, yeah, this is just going to be a kind of a red herring, you're not going to catch me because there's no message here. But <clears throat> there there were some messages found. Now, how they cracked it, it's... I'm still trying to figure out how they all kind of cracked it, because there's some of these ciphers were a little peculiar how they cracked it. I'm not I'm not terrible at ciphers by any means, but I'm not I'm not the world's greatest like decipherer, you know, by any means, but or cryptologist, but I am learning. But that's what we're gonna be going over tonight. We're gonna be going over the ciphers because that's directly what this this villain has gotten away with doing. He's got all these ciphers. And it's inspired all sorts of different mainstream media types of pop culture type of characters. Um we even got to see things such as like in pop culture with like the Riddler, um, for instance, is taking taking cues from this character. There's a, a character in Marvel named the Zodiac Killer, or Zodiac um, is what I believe he goes by. But <clears throat> same kind of thing. But we're gonna go over what we know about this guy. Um, some of these the speculated people who a lot of people are speculating could be, in fact, the Zodiac Killer. And of course, we're going to try and go over a couple theories and things like this. Um, not a super long show. We're only going till about 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or so. But we are going to be going as long as we can. So, so first up, we've got 10 different characters that people over the years have said. This is this guy matches the description to some degree and or his story matches to a T. These are the 10 people that have claimed. Now, if you look at all the facial structures and all this, usually when you have somebody drawing all this, you know, the sketch artist, they're not going to be perfect. And the way people describe people, it's going to come off as different. So you might have a character that looks just like the picture that's drawn there. And then you might have other ones that look way different. It could be the same guy they're describing to. But if you look at these 10, <clears throat> there's only a few of the people here that would actually match. And as you can see, um, the Zodiac Killer himself, his face was drawn first. And then it was, uh, then the glasses were drawn over. You can see because of the darkened lines and all this. Um, they really tried to emphasize this after. You can see what looks to be eraser marks and all that. So uh, even areas where they just kind of just drew over the lines already had. But if you look, there's only a few of them here that can actually match the description with glasses on. If you look with glasses, uh, even without glasses, you just go look at the facial features. You look at the nose, you got person one, you got person two, possibly, well, you have possibly person nine, and then person ten. They're really, they're going to match the description. Everybody else, their, their facial structure is way too off. And number six, you guys, if you guys don't know who that is, I will reveal that. Here in the next few minutes who that actually is is that somebody that's already in prison and that some people are still speculating to this day that this is actually for the crime he's already committed it's this guy's doing some other things i don't think so <clears throat> but if you were to look at this here the zodiac declared in one letter that it wouldn't do to move in on someone else's territory and I do apologize for my, my uh, 
uh, my grammar here. This basically, which is spelled incorrectly right there, uh, declares that they have a designated area that one or all of them kill in. Now, <clears throat> that being said, you look at how divided points one through five and six are. You got one, two, and or one, four, or one, two, three, and four are all pretty close proximity, um, taking pretty much just. It's pretty much almost in the San Francisco area, getting close to the Sacramento area, and one of, and you know with one of those, but then you got five and six, which are near LA. Now, those are a little out of the ordinary, so one could assume one through four, that's one guy and five and six are somebody else entirely. And you can see on my next point here, kills one through four in close proximity, which could indicate one of the killer's territories. However, kills five and six are separated by significant distance. That gives more credence of the theory that there are at least two more killers. Um, so there's could there could actually be up to a total of three. But then we'd have to go and look at the time and all this kind of stuff. So this is where the timeline would actually come in quite handy, uh, which will be, this will be posted up on the Strange Investigations Facebook page. Um, and I will link it on the Crow Works Entertainment page as well for those that are interested. But that I'm aiming for Monday. It's probably the earliest I'm able to get it out. So cross your fingers on that one. <laughs> Monday or Wednesday, something like this around there is when the timeline should be available. This episode will be also continuing on to next Wednesday, so keep this in mind. Maggie Long, we will be arriving back on that case soon. But for right now, we're going to be focused on the Zodiac Killer so I can get that content on here. Um, and expect this for the next few weeks. This is probably going to be happening. Um, just need to go and get content from that was on Twitch. I want to make sure it's also on YouTube. But <clears throat> I digress. But that's, that's the point I really want to just kind of hone in on. The, the distance here can mean one of two things, possibly three things. Either there's two or more killers, with one killer being up in the San Francisco area, and then the one or two being down near the LA area. Or, this is one killer, and literally this was moving time, um, or maybe he was visiting one, or maybe visiting for, for the other, who knows. Or, this is a little bit of both. So this, you have the first area, which does look like that's one one person right there that was doing that. So Zodiac one um, for one through four, and then possibly five or six could have also been done. But that being said, this could have been just people that are also working together. Maybe it wasn't a copycat. Maybe it wasn't something that was just, you know, somebody else is admiring this other guy's work. Nah, could have been just two, two individuals that were just completely just separate like that, or they could have been working together. Who knows? So there's a few different options, and we can break that down, which we need the timeline for. <clears throat> now this is where things get interesting, because now you see all these different letters that were also getting sent. And now these, these letters, this is the interesting part, because when you start seeing these things, you see that he's got a lot of anger. Um, you see the handwriting does change. And you get to see, I mean, you see from this very first one up in the top left, Bates had to die. Um, I believe it says there would, there would be blood or would, there will be blood or something like this. Um, you can see that handwriting differs from the rest of them. Um, like drastically. You know, you look at the letter right below, Dear Melvin. That's where you get to see the symbol, the, the circle with the cross over it. That differs very, very heavily from a lot of these other ones as well. Look at... Um, Look at the third one from the left. That's pretty nice. But you look at that handwriting and look at the one next to it. And then look at the very bottom right one. They're pretty similar. Doesn't look like the second one from the left. Doesn't look like the bottom left. Doesn't look like the middle one in the, on the bottom. See, so this is where you have to kind of... We have to go and analyze the handwriting here. Was the person rushed? Was the person, you know, choosing to go, maybe this person was more comfortable and why, while some of these were just kind of done in public? Who knows? There's a lot of different reasons as to why the handwriting could change. Um, this is going to be crucial, like I said, when it comes down to uh, other cases. As all these other cases, we're going to be using a lot of this stuff from these older cases. 
and we're going to be reviewing it when it comes down to these current cases we're working, you know. Um, the David Crowley case, handwriting. We know that's a thing with that case. Why? Because you see David's handwriting and it's been up for debate whether some of the stuff has actually been his handwriting. Um, I digress on this. this we can really get off of off the topic here, but handwriting is kind of a key thing, especially when looking at ciphers. Um, if Really, if there's a whole lot of handwriting, this is where this is going to be coming in very, very handy. Um, other times, it's just going to kind of be, you can see patterns on how they kind of choose things. You can kind of get in their head and see how they would pick things for a puzzle. So, but these, some of these were done, or they were, um, I believe they were found at a college campus or something along these lines, but they, these are just some letters that they are suspected are all the Zodiac Killer. Do we know for sure? Now, uh, if you look at the letters, this also, based on the handwriting, you can already get to the point of either there's one killer and there's specific circumstances as to why certain things happen. For instance, rushed or not rushed, uh, public environment versus private, relaxed versus stressed. It's a lot of different um, reasons why the handwriting can change. However, that being said, you look at the writing style, you look at the emotion, you look at all these things, you can see the personality in it. To me, there looks at least two to three personalities with all of these right here. If you listen how they're speaking, I would say it's no less than two. Um, once again, this could come from somebody that's just absolutely just nuts. Okay, but <clears throat> that being said, there's something to go and also add to the whole theory that there was more than one person involved. Next up, now these are the ones that were solved. Now these are the order we got them, okay? So, this is the order that they were received in. So you get the handwriting matches in each of these ciphers. So we know, okay, they match, so it's gotta be the same guy. Uh, cipher characters mostly contain letters from the English alphabet and basic shapes, all right? So this is gonna go and meet up. Now this is where I also got into my cipher, which also concludes the same reasoning that I do believe there's more than one killer. But the ciphers are missing four letters, which when deciphered to the English language is J, Q, X, and Z, which aren't extremely common. J is probably the most common out of all those, um, followed probably by either, I believe it's X, then Q, if I'm not mistaken, um, and then Z. Z is not very common at all. Then you got some letters from the ciphers have multiple different symbols. Uh, for example, the E has seven different possibilities. If you were to look at this, this is how I broke it down. For my cipher, this is how this all falls into place. So if you got seven different possibilities in some of these, they're really trying to throw you off on some of these because they know it's gonna be a very common letter. For instance, with the E, you can see the seven, very, very obvious. You get the one in cipher one, uh, the W. It also pops up as a backwards P. On the second one, you can see it pop up as, um, other one I have. Uh, it literally shows up as an E. It's a capital E. Um, but the thing is, you can also look at at the frequency of it. How often in each of these does it pop up? And then there's going to be a reason for it. I believe there's also a numbering, where there's some kind of a number order on each of these lines as well. I have to break it down further, but and I'll show you guys here in a second. There's there's something a little odd about these how they're set up. But these were not actually mailed out the correct order. Okay, so just like that brings up point five, the ciphers were not given in order, which is meant to go and throw people off. So they figure it out, well, you've got other ones that it, it lines up with. So the message was written prior, and then it was ordered this way on purpose. Okay. So I'm gonna bring up the completed one. And as you can see, that's the correct order. So the first letter, then the third, then the second. And it, it writes out like this. Now this is directly a quote from a book. 
But it says, I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous game of all. To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be born or will be reborn in paradise and all the I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. Now, this is where it gets almost into kind of cult like mentality or kind of strange kind of a religious type of kind of a fixture here. He believes that he's building himself a paradise. Now you'd have to look at things, uh, what religions are going to go and push for that. Um, is this a jihad or is this something else? It doesn't seem to be a jihad. Okay, I'm going to just put it that way. But it does seem there's something off about here. And I do feel that looking at some kinds of religious kind of um, background and looking at which ones would relish in that in, in the killing of, of people to go and bring them into an afterlife, which I don't think there's a whole lot of religions that would actually have that as their main belief. I'm sure there's probably some I'm, I've probably never even heard of that have probably got that, and that's fine. But it's still, I think this has something to do with it. <clears throat> but he does take this this whole uh, man is the most dangerous game of all. That directly comes from, if I'm, I'm trying to remember what the book was. I think it was called like Paradise Lost or something like this. But it was essentially a story about um, this hunter. Like he wanted to go and hunt the most dangerous game of all, which he felt was man. And so he essentially, from what I gathered, he kidnapped this man or something like this. And he was dropped off on the island and he was there to hunt the man on his own private island. Sound familiar? Well, it should because, I mean, it's the whole concept of the hunt. Except this is more actually about the sport rather, you know, of hunting something that's dangerous versus hunting innocence, which that's what this comes off as, which could make you kind of think, well, okay, well, this guy's hunting innocent people. Well, we'd have to look where the innocent people are not. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into this. Um, that's where you start looking at the victims. What do they have in common? What what makes them so different all this? So there's a lot that comes into this is you get the victimology, you have the ciphers themselves, then you have the language and the, you've got everything to go and break down. So much to break down. So I'm saying this is going to probably take us two to three more shows honestly, just to get through it. Um, there's a ton to go over. Um, and there's, I mean, I've watched plenty of other detectives look at this and fumble hard. And they, they basically just essentially repeat the same thing over and over and over again. But the thing is, the one thing I'm not seeing a whole lot of detectives looking at is the whole premise of checking the personalities and if there's more than one killer. I firmly believe there's more than one. I, if I had to argue, I'd probably think probably two. Um, one person being kind of more like accomplice. Uh, one more being kind of a mastermind rather than um, you going out and actually committing it. So this is where we kind of get the playfulness, the ciphers and all this, and trying to really th throw the detectives off and all that. <clears throat> all right. And, of course, this is where we start breaking down the cipher. So this is how this breaks down. So this is where he started toying with people and gave this out and said, okay, well, well, my name is this. Well, if we go off that same cipher, this doesn't line up. You might be wondering, well, why? Why doesn't this line up? And I'll show you. This is the part that gets a little weird. Oh, I didn't download that one again. Okay. So essentially this says... If you were to break this down, this one, the first one is, the letter is A. So you look over here on the cipher, where does it pop up as A? That's W. The E, we know that's going to be, it's a forward facing E, so that's going to be E. The N, we know that's another N, or I mean another E. You get the, the circle with the zodiac symbol there, right? So you got we, and then that comes out to be D. So it's weed. This symbol here, they never really said what this is. And that's because we don't really know what this is. So there's three of them here. So you'd have to look in the English language. So there's weed and then blank and then whatever K is, which forward facing K is an S. And then we got this one here blank and then you get the M, which is an H. 
So you're looking at this and what really fits in here. And then you got this one over here, and then you got that little upside down Aries symbol, I believe it is, which I believe is an R, if I'm not mistaken. It's an R and O. I think it's more of an O though. Then you got N, which is gonna be the E. A, which is gonna be W, and then M, which is an H. So it's very, very peculiar. And honestly, I think this is more or less to mess with somebody. I think this is really what this is about. Just trying to mess with them and kind of lead them around. And we'll show you guys with the next one. This next one's also really peculiar because it doesn't really line up all that well either. You can start breaking down with the same type of message. I don't think it lines up personally. I almost think the shapes are there to kind of just kind of sentence breaks and things like this. I think that's what they are more there for potentially, but who knows? But if you were to go and look at these other ones, you can see they line up pretty similarly. Same handwriting. I don't know. There's a lot to this. That's the thing. There's a ton. And if there's two people, then you're looking at two different ciphers, most likely. Which means there's maybe where they message each other. Maybe that's there just to kind of message each other back and forth. Maybe one is just a copycat. And, they're, and they try to go and communicate using a similar cipher. And that message between the three, breaking it down, if somebody's using ciphers to that degree, you'd argue there's there's at least, this is somebody that's got some intelligence. This is not just your ordinary average Joe. This is somebody that's smart. So we're looking at things like mathematicians, which is why that goes back to this man here. Number six, that's Ted Kaczynski. If none of, if none of you guys had guessed at that point, that is Ted Kaczynski. Uh, also known as the Unabomber, when he was very young while he was going to college. So that's why a lot of people think, well, this is this is way beyond just your average Joe. This is way beyond that. So there's no way. It'd have to be somebody incredibly smart. So who would be somebody that's incredibly smart that would also match this description and um, time frame and everything else? I mean, this guy, he lines up, except he doesn't. His facial structure does not line up at all. Only thing that really lines up, honestly, is it's going to honestly just be his lips. That's really the only thing. You could argue, um, you know, his his eyes kind of do. But then you've also got this guy's got wrinkles on his forehead. So if we're looking at wrinkles on their forehead, you're looking at somebody that's most likely either a little bit older or somebody that's out in the sun a lot. And you've only got, and even then you look at the... This guy doesn't, you know, uh, Kaczynski had a pretty prominent widow's peak. This guy does not. So that's why I'm saying Kaczynski doesn't really mix in too well with this. So that's why 1, 3, um, 9, and 10 would really be your only options. If you really break it down based on that, then you'd have to break down, okay, well, what's their day job? Are they working out in the sun? Or are they just older? If they're working on their son, well, then we're looking at somebody that's probably a little more, they're doing a blue collar job more than likely. Um, or maybe they're just, they're well off and they have time to kill. That's a really terrible pun. Um, and they just kind of work around their yard all day. It's that possibility too. Could have been a soldier. It's, there's definite possibilities about these. 